Hello, this is George Nacek. This is update number three of the survey on the frozen lake in northern Minnesota. The lake is Rainy Lake. I have just built and deployed the target for the six mile marker out from the observation point. The target that I built is like this. It's around 63 inches in height by 33 inches wide. It has two triangles for aiming the auto level at and two horizontal cross lines. The gap in between the two horizontal lines is six inches which gives us at a distance of three miles the angular measure will be about 3.6 arc seconds between the two lines. <clears throat> the target is configured with these two triangles, an upper and lower triangle. There's a black portion outline of each of the two triangles which is seven and a half inches wide and then a blue smaller blue triangle in the center. <clears throat> this target was deployed at 48.64283 degrees north latitude by 93.18658 west longitude at a distance of 5.875 miles from the auto level reference point of observation. And I'll just call it the six mile target. <clears throat> what I'm showing here is the target that I just built to go at the six mile mark. The target is 63 and a quarter inches across horizontally by 33 and a half inches in the vertical direction. The two vertical lines uh, with the points of the triangles in the center, that white gap between the edges is one half a foot, six inches. And out at six miles, that gap uh, will be about an angular measure of 3.4 arc seconds. Um, we need a large target like this for sighting because it's going to be so far out in the distance it's going to look quite small due to perspective but it is scaled so that it should look about the same size in the auto level as the nearer targets the target at 1.36 miles and uh, 2.72 miles and this will be an experiment to see if we can indeed sight this target out at six miles. Uh, if we can't, if I cannot do that, then I'll move it in closer to about 4.2 miles. Uh, but if we, I can successfully sight this target, then I'll build another one to put out at four mile, at the 4.2 miles. But before I do that, I want to first see if we can uh, successfully uh, see this target. Now, uh, it's actually going to be mounted up high, around 34 feet up off the ice, on the uh, land in this manner. You can see uh, its height there. It's standing right up next to a 4x8 piece of plywood, so the width on that plywood is 4 feet, so you can indeed see it is taller than four feet it's 63 and a quarter inches so i'll be deploying that here in about another hour and a half i'll go out to home island and try to deploy it well con and i are all loaded up we're ready to head out to home island you can see we got the uh target loaded and uh have uh tools drill and uh ropes and some paper and fire starter in case we run into trouble so we can uh, start a fire and keep warm for the night if uh, something does go wrong. 
So now we're gonna head on out to uh, Home Island. It's going to be about a uh, probably close to a uh, 10 mile trip because we have to take a, a different route to avoid uh, slush and weak ice in certain parts of the uh, lake. So now we're gonna head on out. Uh, Con and I have made it. We're at Home Island and uh, going to retrieve the corner reflector. You can see a path up to it right now. From uh, last time we were here, you can see that the corner reflector is still in the trees. We're going to measure the height that it is above the ice. But that's the corner reflector that we shoot in a laser light back. The pole it's on. My gloves that I left. <laughs> anyway, we now retrieve the quarter reflector and then go set the target up. We're going to find a spot to uh, set the target. It's a nice sunny afternoon. Looking out onto the lake. Back through there. It's home base. Right to the left side of the island coming up as I'm zooming. Friends and Island. Back there. Home base is right below that tower that you see sticking up. Now we'll scout out an area to uh, place the target. Here we are on Home Island. Just temporarily set up the target. It's strung between two trees hanging from a rope. And we'll see how well it can be sighted from the reference point. It's, uh, sun is set about 20 minutes ago. Mercury and Venus are out. Venus and Mercury. There's Mercury in the center of the screen. Try to steady the camera. And down below it is Venus. off to the left of the island there in the center of the screen is where home base the reference point is right about in there okay now head home all ready to go. Last view of the target. When I went to Home Island uh, to place the target, I needed to establish how high up off the ice that I was. 
Um, I was running out of time. I was out there for four hours, and I did not get the target placed exactly where I wanted to. Um, I will go out and adjust its height um, so that it will be the center of the target will be in line with the auto level uh, level uh, horizontal tangent to the earth at the observation point and I uh, roughly got the measure of the height I didn't have I didn't bring the theatolite with me to measure the uh, height precisely what I used was a protractor and a straw if you take a protractor and mount a straw on it so you can uh, sight and then have a plumb weight with a string and this scale on the protractor is graduated so by uh, leveling you can level the sight on this protractor arrangement by tipping it so that the string is right at the center at the 90 degree mark <clears throat> and then you know it's horizontal and level with the earth at that point <clears throat> and you can get within about a half a degree uh, accuracy doing this uh, works pretty well uh, so what I did is say we are out on the ice this is the profile here's the ice and then there's a rock outcropping and then more rock outcropping <clears throat> and there were some trees there's a tree here and then there's two large trees here this one a very large pine tree and this was a smaller pine tree and the distance between these two was probably oh maybe around 20 feet <clears throat> And what I did, because I was running out of time, I couldn't get the target mounted uh, the way I wanted to, so I strung a rope up about, um, it's probably up about 15 feet um, up off the rock crop outcropping, and then I tied some rope to that and hung the target. So our target is sitting like this and this height here was measured, the center of the target was measured to be 48 inches off uh, the ground and what I did is I took my protractor, I sighted from this point to a point on the tree on that particular tree and then out on the ice <clears throat> I mounted the corner reflector my laser corner reflector and then I went back here and used the protractor and sighted to there now I know the measurement of this this was 90 inches up the center of the corner reflector was 90 inches up off the ice <clears throat> so then I know that this spot was 90 inches off the ice and then I sighted this and measured this distance this was uh, around 86 inches <clears throat> and then with the uh, 48 inches <clears throat> we um, we had 48 plus 86 plus, um, well, this was 96 inches, not 90 inches. This was 90, 96 inches. So, the center of the target then, we determined to be 48 plus 86 plus 96 inches or 230 inches above the ice. Now there's a certain amount of uncertainty because of the protractor. This distance here was about 120 feet. This distance here was about 30 feet. So with a 
plus minus half degree uncertainty in the angle inciting this the amount of uncertainty that you pick up here is three and a half inches the amount of uncertainty in 120 feet is 12 and a half inches so the total uncertainty is 16 inches out of uh, 230 <clears throat> so that's all right it is about um, you know uh, a foot and a third out of um, uh, almost uh, 20 feet so it is good enough to get started with <clears throat> now what you're going to see in the video is back at the observation point sighting the targets through the auto level and um, I'm going to show you here what you're going to be seeing <clears throat> is you're going to see the three targets there's a target at 1.36 uh, miles at 2.72 miles and this one at uh, 5.875 miles and the targets have been scaled so that they're going to look pretty much the same size not quite this this targets going to be considerably smaller than the other targets because I did not get it scaled uh, perfectly for perspective because uh, to get it so that it would appear to be the same size as the closer in targets would make this thing unwieldy would just too large uh, already it's over five feet and to make it uh, so that it scales properly for to match the uh, one mile target um, it would have to be up over uh, 70 inches and it, um, I just deemed that that wasn't really necessary it, it takes too much materials and then it becomes very heavy and hard to manage <clears throat> So, you build the video now, and you'll see how I uh, deployed it, where I deployed it, and then you'll see the view through the auto level at looking at the, uh, the, the three targets. It's the afternoon of March 15th. It's uh, 4.20 in the afternoon. We have near perfect conditions in the air. There's a slight little breeze about oh maybe five to ten miles an hour uh, very little refraction uh, the um, air mixing has been good and distance and I'm now sighting the targets last night I placed the target at the six mile mark last e uh, late afternoon and that's the target in the center that's smaller that that's the uh, target that I just showed you a little earlier in this video. And we can use today to assess the placement of the targets. We can see that the target at Fl Franzen Island is just a little bit uh, high. Uh, the target at the 1.36 mile mark needs to be raised up and definitely the target at the six mile in the center there needs to come up considerably now look at where the crosshairs of the auto level are the target out at the six mile mark there in the center of the screen is uh, 19 uh, feet and two inches above the ice whereas the observation point here is just right around 12 feet above the ice and tangent to this spot is way above the target at the six mile mark which tells us there's considerable amount of drop due to the curvature of the earth at the six mile mark if the earth were flat the target at the six mile mark in the center would be above the center line or above the uh, crosshairs of the 
auto level because that target is actually close to 10 feet higher above the ice than I am here with the auto level at the observation point yet the target is way below the tangent level line at the observation so this is just a qualitative indication that there is considerable curvature uh, now over the next week what I need to do is accurately place the target heights so that we can make analytical measurements down to the surface of the water the target in the foreground on the right hand side needs to be raised about a little more than one triangle the upper triangle to be in the crosshairs of the auto level and the target at Franzen Island which is on the left needs to be dropped just a bit and of course the target uh, at the six mile mark needs to be come up at least let's see probably at least a four target heights to get to the um, for it to be center and that's uh, four times uh, five feet that's 20 feet and that's about it needs to come up 20 feet higher um, so I'll uh, briefly go through the numbers on that so we can uh, see if it makes sense so this is where it's at right now on this particular update in the afternoon we'll show that's as we saw through the auto level I have a cover over the auto level here to keep the sunlight out but you can see what we were doing was looking through the auto level and I will zoom out there with the camera you can see the friends and Ireland marker there in the center and the target's a little bit off to the left there in the background. The reference pole you'll notice has been moved. Uh, it was in the way of viewing, plus um, it wasn't far enough out in the lake to uh, register any uh, water beneath it. Uh, the ice shelf um, was being hung up on uh, the rocks by shore so I need to get it out further out into the lake so that we can make uh, an accurate water measurement of the uh, water height so I just moved that here about an hour ago and I'm letting it freeze in and then I'll put the top section on so that's our update today This is a diagram of the current situation where I have the auto level mounted at the shore up above the ice by about 150 inches. The auto level is sitting on a rock outcropping and I've sighted my reference pole and determined that the crosshairs or the tangent that the auto level is establishing to the earth at its mount point is 150 inches above the ice. Now, back at the six mile target out there, we have this rock outcropping and I have the auto level or uh, the target mounted. We just established that it was 230 inches plus minus 16 inches above the ice out at the six mile part. Here's our target. The target has a height of 63 inches and its center is 230 inches plus minus 16 inches. Now if the earth is flat and we're sighting with the auto level out six miles then everywhere along here on with respect to the ice the auto level 
ought to be sighting a tangent that's 150 inches above the ice. <clears throat> well, the center of the target is 230 inches, so the target then, when we sight through the outer level, ought to be above the center line, above the tangent, by 80 inches, plus minus 16 inches. So the uncertainty is definitely uh, masked and swamped out by the measurements that we're making. So most definitely, even taking into account the error uncertainties, this target out at six miles should be above the tangent line if the Earth is indeed flat. <clears throat> now, if the Earth was, say, curving downward like this, then this target is going to be down over here and below the tangent seen and established by the auto level. So we'll see what it is. The uh, This is just a uh, qualitative uh, measurement. Uh, the quantitative measurements will come later where we'll pop at an actual hole in the ice and let the water level come up and then we'll measure to the water level. But this gives us a first indication of what's going on. And this is just my, my first pass at establishing the target height is I have the target mounted and I want to see where it is with respect to the auto level. So if I need to know I, whether or not I need to raise or lower it or leave it where it's at to be in line with the tangent. Well, this is what you're going to see. This is a picture that will be coming up in the video that you're going to be looking at the targets. This target here is the 1.36 mile target. This is the 2.72 mile target. And this is the six mile target. And look at, here is the auto level crosshairs. So this is the tangent to the earth at the auto level. And that target out at six miles is way below that. Now if the earth was flat, this target should be up in here, up above the tangent line. But it's not. It's way below it. And the amount that it's below, we can determine by just making some um, measurements, pixel measurements, or in this case, I just took a ruler and measured that on the one mile target or the 1.36 mile target, the, uh, we have eight millimeters on the height of the triangles. And at the 2.72, it's 8.8 .8 millimeters. And out at the 6 mile target, it's 7 millimeters. And it turns out that the ratios all work out uh, within 7% error of what one would expect knowing the actual target heights. So again, this target is the 1.36 mile target. This is the 2.72 mile target. And this is the six mile target. <clears throat> Let's just go through some numbers here. Is if you, with perspective, remember that we establish a triangle, the angular size is theta in radians, and its actual size in the distance would be s, and say we're a distance d out from s at our point of observation. Here we're looking out. So the relationship is that the angular size of an object out at distance d from the observer is s 
divided by the distance out. It's actual height divided by its distance out. This is the uh, perspective equation. So the target, we have 1.36 miles, we have the 2.72 mile, and we have the 5.88 mile. The height on the target, this is H on the triangles of the targets, our H for the 1.36 mile target is 16 inches, for the 2.72 it's 34 inches, and 63 inches for the 5.88. Now, the theta in radians, now if I had these exactly proportioned, the theta should all be the same. Because if we're looking at, say, a target out in the distance, it will fill this triangle. And then if I move in, I need to proportion the target smaller as I move in closer to the observer by the ratio of its actual height to its distance out, S over D. And I've proportioned them somewhat to agree with perspective so that the targets will look about the same size, but it's not exact. Um, now theta in milliradians for uh, the three targets is 0.186, 0.1, 97 and 0.169. Now if it was exactly proportioned, these numbers would all be the same, but they're slightly uh, different. And if I put theta in terms of arc seconds, then this is 38.3, this is 40.7, and this is 34.9. And measuring on this photograph that I just showed you, the picture size in millimeters is 8.0 millimeters, 8.8 .8 millimeters, and 7.0 millimeters. And if you ratio, you will find that, for example, let's look at um, ratioing, um, say, this one to this one. So we have 40.7 to 38.3. That's given the target, actual target sizes. If we ratio those two numbers, it should about equal what I measured here, which would be 8.8, .8. we'll see, is it, uh, to 8.0. Well, 40.7 divided by um, 38.3, is 1.063, this is 1.10. The error here is 3.4%. So it's pretty close. Now, uh, the, the photograph isn't exact, it's just uh, uh, what I took off the uh, movie <coughs> that's following this, but it's all in agreement. If you ratio all the various numbers, you'll see that it's really quite close. And looking at the photograph, it tells me that I need to raise this target up um, uh, a full target size, uh, two target sizes, or for this center of this target to agree with the tangent to the auto level, this has to be raised uh, another 129 inches. So I have to get the target up off the ice at least 359 inches in order for the target to line up with uh, the other targets. <clears throat> and I also, we can see from the photograph that I need to raise the uh, 1.36 mile target and slightly lower the Franzen Island target. I'm going to briefly talk about the surveyor's auto level versus a laser for sighting targets in a the distance. There seems to be a lot of misconception out there about the capability of lasers and um, 
what you can do with laser versus the surveyor auto level. Suppose you have a target like I have built. Well, we're going to try to sight up this target in the distance. <clears throat> now with the surveyor's auto level, we have a crosshair that remains level, a, a tangent to the earth at the point of where the auto level is mounted. And you adjust the target height or the auto level or both so that the horizontal crosshair of the auto level lines up with the center of the target. <clears throat> now auto levels have an uncertainty because of the optics and how good the internal compensator is. And my Topcon auto level is spec at 0, .0 arc second. Now that is if you're uh, doing close in work. That is, this is if you go through a loop of one kilometer with say uh, 10 setups in that loop, you're guaranteed to be within 0.8 arc seconds. But if you're doing one straight shot, you don't get this kind of accuracy. I have spent a lot of time characterizing my auto level <clears throat> and I have found that at best on mile shoots of miles of distance out, about the best I can do with the optics and um, the internal just the adjustments of the auto level is about six arc seconds. There are better ones out there. Jesse Kozlowski has auto levels that are better than mine, but we'll just use what I go with what I have here. So we can. This is the best that I can do with my auto level, which means then if I'm sighting the center of the target, I could have an uncertainty, a window of uncertainty of twice that. It could be plus minus six arc seconds. So I could have a total uncertainty window maximum of 12 arc seconds. Now, with a laser, if we're going to use a laser to line up this target, we need the laser to have a collimated beam, a very tight beam, to fit within this window to be equivalent to the auto level. <clears throat> Lasers, when they shoot out a beam of light, it's a collimated beam, coherent, but it doesn't remain pencil thin forever. It actually deviates and diverges with distance. That is, it spreads out. And the spot size gets bigger and bigger the further you get away from the laser. Well, the lasers are rated in terms of divergence of the beam. That is the angle with which the beam will diverge from being on axis. Now this is related to the perspective equation. Say our spot diameter is S, then at a distance D out, the relationship is, since we're taking the angle from the axis out to the edge of the beam, the beam divergence will be half the diameter, or S over 2, divided by the distance out, or S over 2D. Now in the case of the auto level, my spec, my uncertainty, let's say this is theta of the auto level, is this. So the window is twice the auto level spec. So to make the um, to get a particular size, angular measure, again, S is equal to D times, in this case, the size is twice the auto level spec, or, or what I've determined. So, putting in for S, because both the auto level window of uncertainty and the laser spot size need to match up to compare uh, equivalencies, we have then that twice D 
times the auto level spec is equal to twice D times the divergence, beam divergence of the laser. So it's independent of the distance out. So to compare what kind of laser you need to uh, equal the capability of an auto level, the beam divergence of a laser has to equal the uncertainty in the auto level angular measure. Well, in for my auto level, that's six arc seconds. Well, what's six arc seconds in radians? Well, six arc seconds in terms of milliradians is point zero two nine milliradians. You are not going to find the laser for under tens of thousands of dollars that could match an auto level, match my auto level. In fact, mine again is not the best. You can do even much better than this. Uh, you could easily get this down to point zero zero uh, five or, or something with a, a higher quality auto level. But even at this, you can see that um, you're going to have difficulty finding the laser to match this kind of beam, to give this kind of beam divergence to measure the cape, meet the capability of an auto level. And that it doesn't end there. Lasers have uh, other issues that the further you go out, uh, depending upon uh, how clear the atmosphere is, you can have particulate matter, uh, moisture in the air, that's going to cause the beam to scatter and it's going to spread out even more. This is the best case for the laser. Uh, in general, the laser is going to get scattered in the atmosphere. Uh, you're going to have also issues with as you go further out, the intensity of the laser beam changes, gets weaker and weaker, and you're going to have a hard time seeing that spot on the target at six miles out. Um, and uh, you have diffraction on the edges. You don't have a, a well-defined circular beam spot on the targets when you're out several miles. So the auto level is far superior to uh, lining up and aiming at targets than a laser is. Um, uh, and there's nothing special about the laser. Laser, an optical laser that you can see, is subject to the same refractive issues at an auto level uh, or looking through a spotting scope. There's nothing different. The laser does not solve those problems and it has many other problems. You don't have to worry about scattering and uh, diffraction when optically looking through a spotting scope to line up the crosshairs with your target. But with the laser you do. It just makes no sense to use a laser uh, in this sort of application. All laser would be good for is to maybe do some sort of a uh, qualitative indication, visual indication, but for trying to do, make precision measurements on a quantitative uh, basis, the laser is not the way to go. You want to use a surveyor's auto level. So the uh, next episode that I'll be doing will... Uh, having to do with getting the targets all lined up with the tangent established by the auto level and then once that is done all the targets are adjusted and in place we can start making measurements from the targets down to the surface of the water to get what the drop distances are. Um, just show real quick here what I've been doing. Uh, yesterday I had two snowmobiles delivered. These are uh, Articat Panthers. They're twin cylinders. They're uh, nice snow machines. Um, I won't be using these two machines. I'll be using other machines, another machine uh, for this afternoon than these. Um, I need to first uh, 
check these out and make sure that uh, they're uh, operating correctly. Over here I have my bobcat. I just plowed out the yard, my garden area. Uh, we're middle of March, so the sun is getting high in the sky. So I want to get an early start this year on my garden. This is one of the garden plots and remove the snow so that the uh, ground will start fine by the end of uh, or by the end of this week and next week which the dirt should be uh, exposed and start thawing out you see this is all garden here and over there and then there's another leg to the garden going out in this direction but I didn't clear that out because that's actually been planted there's asparagus in there and then down at the end there's a uh, large strawberry patch so anyway I'm going to finish up uh, with the mounting system on the target and get loaded up and uh, head out to home island very nice day today. It's up above freezing. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of melting going on. We're getting getting the little rivers cutting through the ice. And uh, but the ground uh, still has is frozen several feet down. And there'll be a few weeks before the frost starts lifting. And so the ice isn't going to deteriorate for for another uh, couple weeks would be my guess before uh, the snow gets burnt off the ice and uh, the energy of the sun start penetrating into uh, the ice. So this is after plowing the yard. Move the snow over to the south ditch so that it'll melt quickly yeah Con wants to get a stick huh ready Con here we go ready Good boy. Drop. Good boy. Come on. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Good boy. Looking over the garden area, and yard. Snowmobiles that got delivered. And likes to climb up on the roof. He's really good at climbing up an extension ladder. <laughs> 